depending on the length, that could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 3 hours. Um, we do have the necessity that we have to be able to post videos that are up to 4, 5, or 6 hours long. Sometimes the city council meetings reach that sort of length, and so we kind of had to go with something that wasn't going to inflict a, a one hour or a 10 minute or a five minute video length on us. So we, 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 we were kind of stuck. We had to go with something that would, would have the ability to hold those longer video lengths. Um, right now we have 500 hours, but we're getting ready to expand. I think the, the next level is 1,500 hours but there is a, a cost element to that. But again, the, the city and the county pretty much carry most of that because it's mostly their programming that's eating up all of that. So. So, was there a separate cost between video on demand and streaming? Or was it yes, yeah. there was a separate cost. Um, both of them require their own hard device okay. and there's a peg vault or a peg streaming and they're each around $3,000. Um, I'm not sure what the yearly cost on the PEG stream was because I wasn't involved in that process, but the PEG central yearly cost is $3,000 as well for the first uh, 500 hour uh, allotment that you get. And you can leave your videos up as long as you want, as long as you stay under the 500 hours. Once you go over 500 hours, you either have to upgrade your account or you have to get rid of something. Well, the meeting's going on. Is it also encoding? Or online, and yes. then when it's done, does it just automatically go up there? Do you have to do anything to force it up there? We have to go and authorize it for the video on demand. And then it's when it's online, it's not recording for the video on demand off of the peg stream. We've got another process, so we're we're record. It's it's been, it's streaming, and we're recording it as it's going, and then we send it up once it's finished. Okay. So, so you have to manually hit something to send yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've got a. Um, automatic thing that when the when the, the city council meeting starts it starts getting recorded right then okay. and then um, we have to manually go in and tell it to stop recording because we never know how long those right. meetings will be so somebody actually does have to go in and, and stop it but it's it's worked out really well for us um, we have a lot of people in the community who can't afford cable and they can still get on even on their mobile devices and watch our videos and and it's it's been pretty amazing. People, I see you guys on the internet. Wow! And we've had some of our local news uh, lead into the fact that you know you can watch the government meetings live on the peg stream. So it's been really really popular. Um, we have gone the route of mostly keeping it to the government or the library stuff, just because there is a cost to it. Uh, we're we're kind of leaving our producers to find their own methods and mechanisms for posting their own videos. Um, we wanted something that would be as simplistic as possible. The, the government folks want to see it. They don't care what the rest of the web page looks like. And uh, the Peg Central is, is a highly functional site. You click on it and, and they're really reliable. And I'm not sure if you guys interact with Electronics at all, but their yeah. customer service is just amazing. So we've, we've had a really good time dealing with the peg central and the peg uh, stream. Any other questions? Five hundred hours is three thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Oh, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago. We're maxing out now, so I, I, I'd say we're at about four seventy-five, something like that. We had to go through and clear off some stuff. Um, what we ended up doing, if you scroll all the way down, there's a, a Rock the Plaza, which is an event that the library hosts. And last year, this time, we had 50 videos in this Rock the Plaza setting, and we had to go through, and, and what we did was we cleared off most of last year's stuff so that we could make room for this year. Um, so we have had to do some, some weeding out. Yeah, yeah, we have the files, and, and if we remove a file, we can send it back up to them at a later point if we decide that we want to have it back. I think Dale was first. Yeah, that's what I'm going to ask you, though, is where, where are you keeping um, the files? I mean, is it on, a, on a, your own Access Fort Wayne uh, hard drive, or where, where are you keeping the when, files? When they're available off of the, the... When you get clear, where do you keep them? I have hard drives. Um, being part of a 
library, there's an archiving mission built right in. We have video, even tape archives going back into the 80s. Right now I've got four terabytes full of videos from the last couple of years. And we've, we've got a project going on right now, um, an archiving project, and, and we're getting ready to put a requisition in for an archiving uh, database computer. And odds are they're going to say yes, and I'm about to get like some sort of incredibly huge 50 terabyte archive database server that just, it's kind of blowing my mind. Um, but there's, there's been a real effort uh, within the library and ACPL to try to permanently archive a lot of this footage that we're creating and we're trying to take advantage of the fact that it's already on file format. The trick that we're kind of encountering is with the Latronics equipment, everything works off of MPEGs and you know how viable as a sustainable archiving format are the MPEGs. 15 years from now, is that format even going to exist? Can you pop that file into a computer and have it play it? Not sure. You know, most most everything else goes with the, the MP4s and the MP3s. Um, the the American Library Association's preferred formatting file type is like a it's it's called like a JPEG 2000. It's pretty much pictures of your video, and for a 20 minute video, that file is like 15 gig or something. It's pretty insane. Um, so I've been rejecting the idea of switching our archives over to that because I it, <laughs> Really? So um, we're, we're, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to do the permanent archiving process, but we do have a couple of terabytes floating around holding our stuff. Frank? I haven't heard any of you mention archive.org is your reason. Uh, that, that's a tool that we use actually quite a bit. Um, I said that what we were doing wasn't... Uh, you, you can yeah, you can uh, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we use it. I wasn't showing a comprehensive look at everything that we do. Um, uh, sorry, can you... Okay, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing a comprehensive uh, look at all of our, our online uh, uh, s solutions. We do use archive.org very extensively for longer format stuff. Um, all of our uh, council meetings that we tape and things like that, we keep it. We keep a permanent archive there. So, like in the workflow, they get recorded. They get uh, transcoded to MPEG4 um, uh, format and then uploaded directly to. That died. Then, then they're they're all on archive. Yeah, we use it a lot. It's, oh, okay. Do you have any? I'm sorry. Archive.org. Do you have any trouble uploading larger files? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Have you solved that issue? I we tr I tried to use. We started doing video on demand a couple of years ago. I wanted to have archive.org as part of it, and then for the longer files, I could never get it. I could never get it to reliably work. So I gave up on it. I would be great, yes, it's a nonprofit solution, and I think it probably is a nice alternative to YouTube, and they're, you know, they're an arbitrary corporation that could just make everything vanish. I just haven't had time, or no one's had time to be able to go back and figure out a way to make it work. Is there anybody else using archive.org? I mean, because I tried, I, like, I will answer real fast. So there's a gentleman named John Hauser at the community media uh, group in Humboldt County, and he set up a relationship with archive to kind of use them. Point person because they were not focused on video and not focused on taking things from back station. We didn't really have people who wanted to deal with us. So uh, if you have questions or you're having issues, John can help you kind of get past a lot of that stuff. I already did that. I did that. I I that. Never mind. Uh, I they still, they were having, they changed the way you upload. If you upload small stuff, it's great. Yeah. But as soon as I hit a gigabyte file or something like that, I had to go through a total different process. I, you know, we, I was doing good for about a month, and then it just became so time consuming. Is anybody else managed man, man through with archive.org? The, the archives, I feel like it's, it's great. It's really great, but it's got caveats, and, you know, 
Definitely, I, you know, there's there's no perfect solution, I think, for completely free, huge file storage. Um, but archive is as close as I think I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, the things that bug me about it are, I think, different than the things that bug you. Like, their videos look bad, but. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I like the idea that their philosophy is sure. what I looked really into it was we lead in permanent storage. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's the best solution I know for completely free, unlimited file size storage. So about six months to a year, maybe will come online. Hopefully. Maybe they've got financial issues. I mean, they seem to be doing well. This is the best strategy. We use uh, Vimeo. Does he also use Vimeo? Download. I mean, it's really good for short stuff, channels. Uh, my caution I would tell people is there's three types of accounts. There's a free account, which is great. You get uh, 500 megabytes a week, perfectly normal, great stuff. Then there's a plus and a pro. And you want to be careful about which one you use because there's one for more commercial and you'll end up, if you need more space or more stuff, if you get, the bandwidth is limited, if you get the commercial account, you'll have to pay more because they want to use it as commercial. But then there's the plus account, which is for nonprofits, and it's like, I don't know, does anybody remember how much? It's like thirty dollars a year or something. You get only five gigs a week. Five five hundred five gigs a week, which isn't which, you know, you got to deal with. But you can embed your sites really nice and easy. Um, the unlimited people can come there. Unlimited streams to them. So if you ever go that way, just be careful. Don't get the what you would think these the commercial account. Get the nonprofit account. Much better. We love it. I mean, I have channels and it just works really really well. And hopefully they're not going to. Non-commercial, you can, if you buy the Plus account, you don't have branding and there's no commercial content. That's my plug for Vimeo, sorry. Yeah, everything, uh, this is all built off Vimeo Plus account. So, I think we'll move along to Chris. You can talk about your content and workflow management for your sites and you're running a lot. Uh, workflow is a mess. Uh, all of this stuff is a mess. We've been trying to sort it out for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Many of the, uh, well, putting aside the producers, because that was just, that's impossible. But um, just dealing with staff production, it's only in the, I'd say in the last couple of months have we kind of solidified a workflow for compressing the video and getting it online in a reliable method that everybody uses in the same way at the same time. And that's just for stuff CMN produces. Um, Anything that the Rochester government account produces has its own totally separate workflow, and there are many, many manual steps involved. Like we, I personally sat there and created step-by-step -step guides, and then printed them out, and we sat there and instructed people how to do it. It could be streamlined, definitely, but there are a lot of steps to it. Um, I, and all honestly, the thing that's made it the easiest as far as CMN staff productions, getting them uploaded to. Uh, let's say Blip or YouTube, is Final Cut Pro 10. Um, and especially for the producers now that we're teaching them in the class, yes, they still need to have a YouTube account, but I can at least say it's right there in the menu, select that and upload the video. Because prior to this, it, it was just too many steps. Um, right now, the staff will export a master copy of the file, and then we'll run it through Compressor and Create. We'll just use probably the sharing options by default that are in Compressor. Some of them, they generally create a very large file, so if, um, if the, we have file limits on the blip account, I'll just go into compressor, duplicate the setting, and knock the uh, bitrate path. I'll knock it down by a quarter. It works fine. But uh, up until up until Final Cut 10, really, staff have been producing things and then dumping them over the network onto my computer to upload. So now we're starting to get staff that can also just upload from their own machines, which is good. So. So, um, Hannah, I gotta cut it short because Daniel with Live View has to get going. He's meeting.
his wife at the airport. But we technically still have 25 minutes in this session, so this would be your guys' time to ask these experts.